Welcome in, welcome in to the fire zone. We are here taking a look back at the week one Monday night football game. Unfortunately, home team came up a little bit short. It was still a heck of a game. I mean, it's a really good game, really fun game to watch. You know, anytime you get an overtime game, that's always exciting. But, um, you know, it didn't come out the way that, that we as Ravens fans were hoping for. Um, you know, Raiders 33, Ravens 27. But, um, you know, we're going to chop that up from the defensive perspective. Joining me as always, Denard Melton at the Fire Zone Show. Denard, how you doing, man? I'm good, sir. How are you? Oh, living the dream, baby. <laughs> always and forever. Living the dream. If you ain't living the dream, the dream is living you. <laughs> One way or the other. Now, you don't want to be on that side of it. Um, but no, nah, you know, you 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 probably saw it out there uh, in the Twitter streets after the game. It was ugly, you know, no way to sugarcoat it. A lot of doom and gloom among the fan base. Uh, I think I saw somebody say the season was over. <laughs> wow. I don't think I saw that one. <laughs> yeah, 16. Well, here here's why. He was already counting the Chiefs game as a loss. So he was saying 0-2 season's over. Even at 0-2, you got 15 left this year because we're playing 17. It, season's probably not over for you at that point. So uh, <laughs> that was probably the most extreme one that I saw. Um, mm -hmm. Most of it was just, and we'll we'll talk about this as we we you know we get into it because we're probably just going to go through kind of all the position groups and and you know talk about some of the stuff that we both saw. But uh, there was a lot of complaining about the four man pass rush, right? Not getting any pressure, always having to blitz. But for me, that's always we talked about this before we click record. It's always like when you said it, it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? When he blitzes, and then quarterback's able to get the ball out. Obviously, there's going to be a, a weak part of that coverage somewhere because you're sending extra guys. You're taking somebody out of coverage, so there's going to be a weak area, and if the quarterback finds it, you know they burn. Uh, you only rush four. You sit back and play zone. Like oh, he's picking them apart. He's dicing them. He's dicing them. <laughs> so I'm like the slow death. Yeah, so it's like you know you, you can't you can't win. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So just I was thinking just off the top before we dive into like specifics, just any kind of big picture takeaways from the defense after that game. Obviously, you had some guys making their pro debuts. You know, Dafe Owe, our guy Brandon Stevens got out there. Chris West, uh, Chris Westry got out there, um, and then, you know, seeing some guys who hadn't been out there in a long time, like Tavon Young, and then just, you know, the defense being out there together, as it is. Obviously, they, they were missing some guys, didn't have Peters, didn't have Jimmy Smith, didn't have Derek Wolf, but, you know, still had a large component of the defense that they intended to have out there going into the season out there, aside from those three guys. So any big big picture stuff for you coming out of that game? It's never as bad as you as it seems, and it's never as good as it looks. And I will say this: I was not surprised, and we talked about this last week, either on cam or off cam. I don't like predictions. You don't like doing predictions. I need to see the first five minutes of a football game, and I can tell you pretty closely what's going to happen in that football game. And when I saw the Raiders come out in their first couple drives and it was 90 pass, 10 run, you, you saw what the game plan was. It was just to basically just to run the Ravens into the ground. Pass rush, secondary linebackers. It was keep them on the field, do whatever you can to extend drives. And that's what the Raiders did. And, you know, you got to give your hats off to John Gruden for putting together a, you know, a game plan the last couple months that really attacked and really kind of exposed a lot of the issues that we saw last year within this defense, which was, you know, coverage on the tight end. It was coverage in the middle of the field and the lack of pressure up front. And sometimes as a defensive coordinator, 
when you see that in the first game, it's a blessing. Because then everyone sees it, and you're not chasing problems all year. Everybody sees it straight up. And it's a long season. Guys are going to get better in sync. But I also hope that Wink will take this as a learning experience to maybe not overgame. Yeah, I um, I want to touch on the Gruden point that you made because as I was kind of rewatching everything and taking my notes, that that just continually stood out to me. I'm like, man, this this is one of those situations where, you know, you're getting both things, right? Things that you 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 really want. Obviously, you're going to go into a game with a plan, right? You you mm-hmm. have your extra time because it's the first game of the season, you know, to prepare. So you're going to have your plan, but then you you got to execute that plan. I mean, everybody's going into a game with a plan, but, you know, like Mike Tyson said, everybody's got a plan until they get hit. <laughs> yeah, you get in the game and you don't know how how well you're going to be able to execute it. I'm not going to say they were perfect because nobody's perfect, but I think they really executed it well. I think that they were able to stick to what they wanted to do. The Ravens weren't really to get them, weren't really able to get them too far off what they wanted to do. You know, maybe every now and then they had to they had to get away from a certain kind of call or certain calls. But for the most part, they were able to stick pretty close to what they wanted to do. And like you said, uh they they clearly and maybe some of it was Jacobs not being healthy. I don't know, but they clearly kind of accepted the fact that they weren't going to be able to run the ball against the Ravens <laughs> and that they, they were going to have to put it on Derek Carr and the pass catchers and really that offensive line, which you know, I had some inexperienced guys in there, but um, I'd say overall, I think they held up pretty well. Uh, but again, Gruden talking about Gruden, he helped in that area too, because their help system with chips and uh, whether it was from a running back or a tight end, or even a, a wide receiver in a tight split, or even just, and I think sometimes people underestimate this, sometimes just body presence by alignment, right? Like you put two tight ends and you create that nub side and you got an edge rusher over there, right? He's got to widen out. Those guys might not even touch him on their releases, but he's got to see them, you know, as he he's rushing. And so, um, and then if they are chipping you, then you don't know when it's coming and when it's not. Yeah. So, you know, so all of that little stuff that you can do to help, um, you know, young guys out on the or inexperienced guys on the offensive line. He did that. Um, the heavy personnel stuff, right? When they were in two tight ends, three tight ends, and then throwing out of that stuff. And the Ravens to match that up front on the defensive line, they were bringing in three defensive tackles. They had my mm-hmm. BK in there, they had B Will in there, and then usually that third DT was a rotation between right. Ellis and Washington. But you got three DTs and then a DN. That's going to take some juice out of your pass rush. I mean, right. just, that's just the way that it is. Uh, no knock on those guys, right? But that, that that's just the reality. So I just thought his plan uh, was a really sound plan and they executed it really well. But anyway, let's go through some of the kind of groups that we talked about. So let's start with the defensive line. Um, take it anywhere you want. Individual players, any kind of themes or patterns that you saw Four man rush, five six man pressures, whatever you want, man. What do you think about the uh, way the defensive line performed? Obviously, they played the run well in search in, in the situation they were presented. Um, I will say the pass rush was, like you said, was kind of non-existent, and not so much because of the lack of quality up front. It was John Gruden's design. It was really his use of bunch sets and and close bunch sets. Because now, not only is it throwing the D line in chaos because he's got to take an extra step wide, he's got to do this and that. Now you're messing up everything on the back end. So, Overall, would I like the pass rush to be better? Absolutely. I just uh, I think teams have schemed us up enough 
to understand how to neutralize our pass rush with formations and shifts in motion. Yeah, and I, I think you saw, you know, in some individual situations, of course, you know, so going back to the thing I was saying about their help system, when you could get a one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. as, a, as a Ravens rusher, particularly the guys coming off the edge, when you could get a one-on-one, -on -one, those are the situations where you're like, okay, it's, it's, it's passing down. You got a one-on-one, -on -one, got to go make your money, got to go earn your money on this one. And sometimes they did, and sometimes they didn't. Sometimes, you know, we, we talk about it all the time. This is this is pro professional football. So <laughs> sometimes you got to just tip your cap to the to the offensive lineman. I mean, they get paid too, right? Whether they're young, yep. whether they're inexperienced. Uh, somebody said something a couple of weeks ago on Twitter, and I, I loved it, man. It just stuck with me. That wasn't exactly about this. He was talking about college players, and he was talking about the ratings, right? Five star, four star, whatever. And he was saying, "Hey, when we get on the field, all that star BS go out the window. It's me versus you. None of that." Yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. None of that stuff matters anymore. Wow. And and in a similar way, you know, with with, you know, even at the NFL level, uh, at the NFL level, right, there's PFF grades and this and that. But once we're out on that field, it's me against you. So you could say you got a rookie offensive tackle in Leatherwood. You got an experienced guy at center, an experienced guy at left guard. But when we get as their left guard, mm, 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 let me tell you, John Simpson. Remember that yeah, name. Yeah, I mean, me. Yeah, me. He, is mean. <laughs> Yo, me. oh my God. he was mean, man. And, and it's it's one game. So I don't want to I don't want to overreact to one game. But I remember him back at Clemson a couple of years ago, kind of liked him coming out of Clemson. But, yeah, he was he, he was out there to put hands on people. And, and, and he did. But anyway, uh, the point to that whole thing is once you're out there is me versus you. And so, you know, you can you can set all that other stuff aside and uh, I thought Houston, there were times where he got that one-on-one -on -one and he won. Uh, you know, OA, I, I, OA was kind of what I expected, right? Yep. You know, the athlete, right? Amazing athlete. Everybody everybody knew that. You can see that out on the field, the way he moves. Um, you know, whether you're going to see the most refined technique as a pass rusher all the time. No, nah, I don't think anybody was expecting to see that if you were. Um, you know, you you were probably being unrealistic. I think he would acknowledge that even himself that he's really still kind of learning that. But from an explosiveness standpoint, I mean, look, you can't get away from that guy. Like if he's on the backside or something, you you're not <laughs> you're not getting away from him. Um, but I think I showed you that one clip where he was running a game and yes. he's the looper coming inside. <laughs> Brandon Jacobs just got him right up under his chin and put him on his back. Um, he's a weapon when it yeah. comes to games and the one he got that forced the interception with him. Yeah, that's beautiful. It was beautiful. They could run that four or five times a game with just those two guys. And one of those two guys is going to go free. So I hope I see more games. He reminds me as a little bigger and a little stronger version of an Anthony Weaver mm. where he could be stout against the run. But Anthony Weaver had a little wiggle to him if, if you gave him some movement on the line and things on that sort. So I get it. <laughs> and you even saw the other guys. Campbell, he had a couple of wins. Obviously the big fourth down stop. Mm -hmm. Uh, he put swim move on the center, and even though he didn't tackle Jacobs, you know, that penetration kind of gave time for the cavalry to all show up. Uh, so, you know, he he did his thing at times. But, yeah, it was just one of those situations, and you, you made the point, so I give you credit that, yeah, if you got to drop back 56 times and rush, um, like you said, you might have, what would you say, 20, 25 good get-offs in you as a pass rusher? As a pass rusher, like, you're just – if you're wheeling and dealing, it's different. If you out there and you know it's going to be this, it's going to be a swim move and this, maybe you can get out there and, and do it 30 times. But if, you, if you're getting quick set, if you're getting chipped, if you're getting this, you're getting that, 
that's a lot on the body. That's a lot of mental strain. That's a lot of thinking that is just wearing on you as a pass rusher. And sometimes it it doesn't matter how many bodies you have. 60 pass rush snaps is a lot yeah. in any game. Yeah, I was looking at the game book and uh, telling you that I didn't know that the Raiders had 80 offensive snaps. Now, I know we, when we say 56, 60, we're talking about, you know, dropbacks, but also including run plays, you know, we're talking 80 offensive snaps. Uh, the Ravens, who have had the uh, the upper hand in snaps a lot, especially going back to that 2019 season, right, they would kind of dominate offensive snaps and boa constrict people at the end of games. Mm -hmm. uh, they had 67. So they were on the other end of that equation this time. Typically they would be the ones up there in like the 70, mid-70 range and kind of, you know, squeezing the life out of people to close out games. But this time it was track meet. Like you said, it was it was pass, it was passing game track meet in this situation. But anyway, let's let's move on to the next position. Group one near and dear to your heart, the linebackers. Uh, how do you think the linebackers play? They were good against the run, except for the touchdown. I was just can't happen. Just, <laughs> just can't happen. Just can't happen. Just can't happen. Um, but they do happen. So I was I was okay with them against the run. Though Harrison played it okay, Buckley played well in certain instances. I think they struggled in pass coverage mightily, and I'm not really sure if that's scheme or the game plan because they weren't. In traditional type drops, they seem to be always spot dropping. They always were looking for Renfro and, and the tight end all the time. And sometimes as a linebacker, when you are doing all that, you forget how to play linebacker. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was always – probably going to be an area um, that Gruden was going to target. And really every week, every offensive coordinator in the passing game, I remember having this conversation with people going back to the CJ Mosley days, right? And how much people used to get on him about, oh, he can't cover, he can't cover tight ends. And I used to say, well, look, you can have a conversation about a guy's ability, right? An individual guy and his ability to cover and different, you know, types of, of people he can cover. But you gotta you gotta just think big picture about this. In the passing game, what what, what group are you gonna want to target the most? You want to go after corners? You know, maybe if you got a guy out there who you feel you can take advantage of or exploit or whatever, maybe safeties eh, in certain situations. But if you gotta look at those groups, I got DBs or I got linebackers. You're probably gonna go after the linebackers. Yeah. So. I said just by the nature of the kind of athletes who can who play in the middle of the field on offense in the NFL, mm -hmm. <laughs> linebackers are going to get targeted in the passing game. And that's just the way it is. And the other reality right now is, you know, the Ravens, the two guys starting for them, or at least playing the most snaps, they're still young guys. They're second-year guys. And it takes time to learn that NFL passing game and those concepts you know, what what <laughs> what are they trying to do to me? You know, mm -hmm. number one. And then like we've seen in, in the Kansas City games or other games, they're gonna show you all this stuff in the backfield too. You know, you're trying to sort all of that out. Should <laughs> and then you got this stuff happening behind you. So I think they were better at it um than maybe sort of you know the early part of the last season. But yeah, they were certainly still you know sort of exploited in certain mm -hmm. situations i think and it wasn't as bad as last year yeah there weren't moments where their head was chopped off or play going this way and, and one going that way they were there but they weren't there <laughs> <laughs> and i think next week yeah. If they simplify it, maybe they'll be more present. Yeah. 
I, you, you mentioned spot dropping too when they play zone. You know, watching college football over the weekend, it really kind of stands out. And I've seen other people talk about this too, how much spot drop zone the NFL plays compared to college. College is a lot more match, whether it's man mm-hmm. match or zone match. Within those zones, they're using one of those two principles. They're not doing a lot of country cover three or where they're just dropping to a landmark. Yeah. There's just I don't want to get into that. <laughs> we can do a whole show on that. Over I, the pluses and minuses of spot drop versus Matt. Because I'm not necessarily saying one is gonna be better than the other all the time. I think it's like everything else in football. It's situational. Right. I think there are going to be times when spot drop might work a little bit better for you than like a man match or his own match principle, depending on what the offense is doing. But then other times those are going to work better for you, depending on what they're doing. So I'm, I'm going to be a little real on this spot dropping and and and, and match up ideas. The real reason why. Certain D coordinators only do spot driving. They don't trust their linebackers. And not only do they don't trust their linebackers, they're not smart. (laughs) And I'm not saying that in a negative way, but it's just like, if you are a fully blitzing team, you're not practicing matchup zones. It's just not something you do. And when you see teams like even last year, when when the Redskins were were cooking on defense with their front four and everybody else was involved, even in the game against the Chargers this week, their front four wasn't like going crazy. But you can tell they play zone. They play a ton of zone. And they make it difficult because they're in lanes. They're reading. That's the difference between a cover two and read two. Cover two, you're spot dropping. Read two, the corner's reading. The Mike linebacker's reading. The safety's reading. The outside linebacker's reading. If there's nobody in the, in the flat, then I'm buzzing out to the curl. If number one is staying home, I got to buzz to the flat. And number corner's going to drop off like there's so many rules there's so much talking going on if you just play straight cover two which the ravens seem like they do you're gonna get picked apart unless you have a peters out there and peters is playing reed anyway and he gonna be like you just gonna cover my butt when i make a mistake <laughs> yeah yeah if you've got that dude out there you basically have another d coordinator on the field yes. corner and so he can he can play that Right, he can no. play that way. just on his own. It doesn't matter what the call is. He'll just he'll, he'll trust figure it out. <laughs> yeah, he'll trust what he sees in his his study, and and he'll do that. But that's an interesting point, and maybe something we we can flesh out another time. But like, how much of that stuff do you want to put on your linebackers when you already have an extensive pressure package? Right, you got them doing a lot of stuff in pressure, and now you say, okay, yeah, now in addition to that. Hey, I need you to do all of this read stuff, right? When one goes up and out, you got all of him. If he goes in, you got to make a push call. If he does this, you got to <laughs> – yeah, there's a lot of stuff. You, you uh, got to pick one or the other. Yeah. Because if you start getting in the middle of that stuff, the Raiders game happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that that we'll, we'll leave that one for now. But that's that's an interesting topic of, of, of time. How much time do you spend and how much do you invest – Right. In each one of those. Right. Like you said, it's, it's, it's like your bank account. You don't have unlimited money in there. Right. Mm-hmm. You got a fixed amount and you got to spend it on certain things. So that, that, that's kind of how I, I look at that. That's a good point. Anyway, uh, moving on, moving on one more time. Now, DBs, we can just lump them all together here yep. as we kind of this last group. Corners, safeties. What do you think about how they play? I will separate the corners and the safeties. I was not happy with the safeties. I just wasn't happy. I know you're coming. With boy. I can already tell you, you're ready to come after my man. <laughs> <laughs> I can already tell. He needs to be better. Yeah. I, I'm not even going to say his name. He 
needs to be better. For the people at home who don't know, he's talking about the child. <laughs> <laughs> Just be better. I, I, I don't, there's nothing. If I'm a coach, I don't say anything. I put on the tape, and I just sit back. I rewind it a few times. I might talk about technique or something like that, but I'm not going to say anything about you blew this, you did that, you did this. You... Nope. It's one of those games where you just look over in the corner of the room, and you just put on the tape, and you just watch that guy. And you see how he responds. I've lost zero confidence, by the way. I still think my man is going to ball out. I, I, I've nothing, nothing. There's nothing I saw in that game that made me think like, oh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I need to pump the brakes on the stuff I was saying about Elliot. No, uh, no, no. I'm not. There was nothing. I'm not. Else. I'm not saying he had a horrible game, but he can't play like that. Yeah. If this secondary is going to take the next step, he can't play that way. And he knows it. And what about your guy now, Brandon Stevens? He did some he things out. Like a, he looked like a rookie. He looked like a deer in the headlights or something. <laughs> um, but that's okay. He's allowed to have that moment. He's allowed to have a few of those moments. But they need to get better as well. He needs to trust his technique. He needs to trust that he is a football player, not a robot. And I think a lot of that had to do with once again, we come back to scheme. We come back to game plan. I think the game plan was overcomplicated. He was doing a lot. Be that way. Yeah, he was doing a lot. I think when teams get complicated, you get simple. You take their complication and make it simple. And I think Wink got too complicated to match their complication. And I think it hurt the secondary the most. I think Avert played well. I think Humphrey played what Humphrey does. I think Tavon was rusty. We'll see what Tavon is in week three, week four. Yeah. I, I think at that point you'll know what you have with him. Yeah. What do you think about Chuck? Chuck made some plays out there. I, I didn't see Chuck, and that's a good thing. <laughs> Chuck does his thing. Chuck shows up. Chuck does his assignment. He knows to get people in, in lined up. I ain't worried about Chuck. Yeah. If I'm seeing Chuck, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. If if I'm not seeing Chuck, that means Chuck is doing what he's supposed to do. And in the story. And you, you talked about Stevens looking like a, a rookie. I think. Westry had a couple of plays like that, and it just so happened that they were like in the biggest moments, you know. I mean, and that, that's how it goes sometimes. Like, you can be out there and you know, you could be having a solid game, it's your first game. Um, you know, new team, uh, he's been in the league, he was with the Cowboys. I don't know that he ever played in a regular season game. I think he got called up for a couple of games, but I don't know that he got in on defense, might be mm -hmm. a special team, but anyway, he's out there, you know, and you know, he's kind of doing his thing, you know, keeping his head above water. But then, you know, you have the long pass to Edwards, um, you know, kind of back shoulder ball where you got you. You talked about this during the preseason, how you're like, this guy kind of struggles to find the ball a little bit. Uh, something to keep an eye on. <laughs> and of course, they, they went right at that uh, in that situation. And then, you know, the play to end the game, you know, the pick uh, sort of play where he collides with Humphrey. And I thought Darius Butler. Uh, on Twitter, did a, did a really good job. Everything DB, go check his stuff out. Him and Antoine Bethay, uh, Bethe, man to man pod. Obviously, two former DBs, guys who've played a lot of spots nickel, corner, safety. One thing he talked about on that play, he showed it. He was kind of breaking it down. He was like, You look at Bunch, and he's like, Look, you got to make sure that you understand how you want to play these things. You got to have a plan going into the week. You know, are you going to lock it? Are you gonna lock? Are you gonna lock the point and then banjo the other two guys? You know, there's different things that you. Yeah. Can. But the one thing he was saying about Westry on that play is because he was the inside guy, he was like, "Look, you got to have a little more depth." He's like, "You got to get a little more depth pre-snap in your alignment." 
uh, because he thought he was a little too low, and that's probably what led to the collision. But he said, hey, first first year, you know, first year on this team, you know, guy, um, probably not had a ton of experience in those situations, adjusting to that kind of thing on the fly, right. you know. So that, to me, I think that that goes under the radar a lot. And, you know, obviously I'm a little biased towards DB stuff, but you got to communicate that stuff, man. And you guys got to work that stuff during the week. And you you got to you got to have a plan for how you're going to do it. And everybody's got to be on the same page with it. It's, it is not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. It takes time and it didn't have time. Mm-hmm. You also see the effects of not having Peters. And it's not him as the playmaker, but Peters as the body. Because that's Avert if Peters is healthy. Yep. So it goes kind of hand in hand. Chris Westry, I think he played as well as I thought he was capable of playing. I thought Personally, you can tell he's working on his technique. He's mm-hmm. trying to get his head around. He's trying to find him. Like, he's intentionally doing it. You can see him trying to whip his head around, find the receiver without grabbing. So, I think they found something in him. Yeah. I think he's going to be around here for a while if he can continue to, it seems like, really accept coaching. And I think he's he purposely you can see it in his work ethic. Like, yeah, he gets it. He he's gonna get there. He just it's time. And I think the beautiful part of a 17, 17 game season is it's not how you start this thing anymore. It's how you finish. Absolutely. And they probably thought they were gonna have a little bit more time to bring him along slowly. <laughs> you know, they probably certainly weren't think he's gonna have to come in and play as much as he had to play right in the first game. Uh, but six four corners who can run don't grow on trees. So, don't you, grow on anything. Yeah, so when, you get, <laughs> when you get those guys, even if they're a little raw in their technique, you know, you, you probably feel like, hey, we we got we gotta try to develop this. We gotta yeah. see, you know, what we can do here because the the raw material, like you said, is is rare. You don't you don't find that out there uh, very often. So, yeah, I thought overall everybody, you know, um, it, the one thing with the Ravens is you're going to see effort. They're going to run to the ball. Um, guys are going to compete. You know, you're always going to see that, which to me, I think, you know, that that's always going to keep you in, in, in a game. You're always going to be able to play in close games. If you can do that, if you got guys who are going to run to the ball, who are going to give effort on every play, um, you know, people will talk about Humphrey on that last play. Uh, he quit. Hey, look, there ain't no way he was catching that man. <laughs> yeah. okay. I understand as, as, as a coach, you want to see everybody finish every play. I, I, I totally understand that. And I agree with that. But hey, he wasn't catching that man. But anyway, uh, <laughs> anything else you want to touch on out of that game? I know we're going to. Maybe take a – we don't have much time. I mean, maybe we'll do it Friday. Maybe we'll take a day off and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll talk about the Chiefs. But anything else you want to you wanna touch on to wrap up the Raiders game? Just relax. One game. If they go 0-6, yeah, then, then we'll start chit-chatting. Panic a little bit. We'll panic <laughs> a little bit. But that just means we're just going to just trade everybody in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> get to that point when we get to that point. But right now, I'm 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 optimistic what I saw. I think I think the D line is is gonna be just fine. I think they're gonna make a difference on this football team. I think the linebackers have some growing up to do. And I think I think Josh Bonds is going to help that. I think Josh Bonds is going to be moved up to the hmm. uh, the 53 this week to help settle them down in situations in game because they don't have that right now. You don't have that veteran on the sideline who can say, hey, whoa, whoa, or just put him in the game 
and let Queen see a series and let his brain kind of just slow down. Okay, this is what I'm seeing. Okay, move on. So I anticipate a, a few of those things happening this week. I, I think they're going to be, I think they're going to scale back a little bit on the game plan and I think they're going to turn them loose. I think being at home on a Sunday night, get a little juice from the fans, might, might, might do something, but we got to be smart. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting, man. Getting the Chiefs at home again. They got them at home last year, but obviously, you know, with COVID, there weren't any fans in the stand. Going to be a different atmosphere this yeah. time, um, and and I'm looking forward to it. And and you know, we we don't we we talk about the defensive side of the ball. We don't really get into the offense side, but you know, hey, look, Lamar is just fine. For the, just just that I'll just throw that in there at the end. You know, people, it, it's to your overall point about relaxing. You know, relax about the defense, relax about the offense. Um, it's the first game. Obviously, we know about all of the injuries. They still put up twenty seven points, yeah. and so and should and have almost, won the football game. And should have won, won the football game. game. And should have won the football game. And almost ran for two hundred yards with their third string running back and a dude who they just got off of another team's roster. Like a week ago, he he had like what one practice, two practices, <laughs> practice. and and now they're gonna and and don't forget, Le'Veon Bell. Oh yeah, he's coming. He's gonna make a difference. Quote me, shoot me later. <laughs> and it's gonna make a difference. Yeah, yeah. You you got it. You got to think. Uh, going back to kind of how he left Kansas City that. Uh, he 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 needs to see some time in this game. Like he he's got to be saying, "Look, I got I got to be I got to be on the I got to be up for this game. I got to be up and I got to be on the field for this one." Yep. Uh, so that's gonna be exciting. But anyway, hey, we'll we'll wrap it up here. It was fun looking back, getting that first game. You know, we had been doing the preseason stuff and the all season stuff, and looking forward to it. But it's fun getting that first game under the belt, like I said, exciting game, going to overtime, Monday night football. I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I don't get as wrapped up in the outcomes as I used to. Obviously, I want them to win, but I'm like, look, man, I just want to see a good game. And it was a good game. So uh, I enjoyed we, it. So did I. So did I. So I hope to see a whole lot more of those. We had 16 more opportunities. So I hope to see a whole lot more of those. And, uh, you know, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, like I said, we're going to maybe take a day and then we'll come back and do a preview for the Chiefs game. But, hey, uh, as usual, it's me, MC, Denard Melton. Like, subscribe, comment, download, video, audio. Hit us on Twitter. I think I covered everything. Maybe. <laughs> you know what? Let's get out of here. We'll see y'all.